And so please scan scan this and the first time <clears throat> Okay. Hello everyone, this is Alan from Security Engineering and today I'm going to talking about 5G uh, map based channel model simulation. Okay. Uh we are ANSYS channel partner in Bay Area and our location is in Auckland and we support all kind of ANSYS simulation tools structure, full, uh, low high frequency electromagnetics and we support, we help a lot of like small size, medium size company to um, build their product faster by using simulation. Simulation, when you design a new product, sometimes you have need to build a prototype and manufacture it and to try to see where is the problem. A lot of debugging with time and money. If we, by using simulation, you can find a problem much easier before you actually build a product. So we we help like customers save like money and time make the product like first in the market. Um, so we do consulting, we sell, we support like answer software and we do training and we also do partnership. Okay. And also this is new this year. We have our meetup this year and this meetup we're talking about basically like simulation, uh, all kind of different kind of simulation and we our location will be in Beria but each month we uh, each time we will change to different location and now it's just a quarter thing depending on how many people like want to join and so please scan scan this and the first time will be like February 20 and location will be in uh, ANSYS San Jose office ANSYS San Jose office so if you want to skip like rush hour like, for the traffic also you want some pizza you guys will come to join us and the first time our topic will be like uh, RF talking about RF antenna simulation okay uh, before we go into like today's topic I want to highlight some problem um, so like uh, 5G is coming and 5G is a very like hard thing like for this year especially for uh, 2020 maybe because uh, Tokyo Olympic maybe because of uh, trail war there are a lot of things like f make like 5G important but why important most of people just focus on 5G can be like you get high bandwidth you got like very low latency and that's it but actually I think that 5G have much power than that and I have a lot of problems unsolved so for fo focus on like the millimeter wave so like when the antenna need to transmit millimeter wave the frequencies like increase are very high the antenna become much smaller it's hard for like engineer to like do the testing so simulation can make like a value when it's like for engineer difficult to test in hardware and second it's like when you see like this like antenna array has so many so each of them they can have like different design, they can have like different shape and they have like distance can change. So also change the beam pattern. The beam pattern is based on a lot of variable you can change, but it's like hard for like people change one by one. Like I mean like real world. But if you do simulation you can ask like computer to run different so many kind of casts and just find the best one. And you maybe you can choose the top three casts and do like uh, prototype to testing that like, which one is better you don't need to test like thousands of like prototype and don't don't know which one is better also like I also want to highlight like uh, because millimeter wave uh, you know like when the frequency is higher the pass loads like would decrease like faster so in order to overcome the huge pass loss um, they have a uh, two technology they can use one is like mi Mansi Mimo, the like multi antenna, and another technology like hybrid beamforming. What is hybrid beamforming? Hybrid beamforming is like you can combine like hardware and software work together. Hardware is mean like the antenna have like a fast shifter, so they can make antenna beam more sharper. And the software is like you can use like digital beamforming or like use like baseband algorithm. So combine these two, you can got your like. Uh, up, like Ultima solution or you can imagine it's like a sharper beam the beam will be sharper and they will like direct to like the best like direction to send to the devices you want to 
and the third part would be like the channel because like uh, like we say like if it went to the high frequency like the pass loss is huge then a lot of people think like the current emitter wave only can like kind of work for like fixed wireless because it's hard to track like UE location and now like the base station they don't know where don't know like this photo they don't know where is the building they just know the UE is like location so it's kind of like blind you just know like it's layer you just want to transmit like li live side just very hit but in the real world they have a lot of building a lot of car a lot of things that can block your signal block your live side signal so if the base station know like the they have the like, environment knowledge know where have a tall building where have a wall maybe like you will be blocked for like live side but Maybe you hit like this wall and have a bounce, first bounce. They can got the UE like very good channel quality. So the channel like see, uh, channel state information is like the base station will rake like, and uh, the UE is like channel gain. So they will based on this to know like what's the modulation they should use, what's the code you should use. So in base station point of view, they want to use the less power, but like guarantee you can. Uh, got this data like decode this data successfully because like if you retransmit like, but you, you didn't receive then need to reach like retransmit you again and this waste time and power okay and today we are talking about like uh, this is a uh, uh, first uh, this is my first uh, webinar and we will talk about my recent research because uh, when I'm a soft my background is more like a software engineer when I first time saw like uh, answers to it's amazing but I don't know how to like judge or define like this antenna is good design or not like just an example like this patch like when I saw this like pattern I know it's beautiful but I don't know what's the performance and it's like when I change to like different like um like lens and like space between those antenna and like different frequency, different wavelength. The antenna pattern change, and change sometimes like it's difficult to predict. But I still don't know like if I put it in the system, like how much gain I can get. Also, it's like if I was in like um, maybe we consider like indoor scenario or outdoor scenario or highway, what kind of antenna I should use, and. If I use this one, what kind of performance I can get? And sometimes I see like all kind of like use case. They have different kind of use case. Their 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 base case will be different for like IoT devices. Maybe like MMTC. Maybe they just want low power. Like I can keep retransmit as long as it's low power. I don't need to change data and battery too often. For like URLC automatic driving car. I don't want delay. I want like the signal just hit my target, like the car or like if I'm doing surgery, I don't want to have like any latency. And for like if I want, I'm playing VR, like EMBB. I want. I don't want delay. I don't want to play again and I have like some delay. I'm not dying like because like the delay, and I want like the everything move like very smoothly. So I need high data rate. I think like so. I think for five G, like they have a different kind of use case. All kind of use case, they have like their best like hardware design, also software design. So this is. So to this point, we try to like this is today's outline. We try to connect like an NSS software and NSS is very good at like simulation hardware for like and they kit and we try to like get this this um data from the like, ANSYS simulation tool Safen. We can we hope we can got like my best channel models and transfer to NS3 to create like system level or link level simulation result. What I mean system level link level is like mm, so when you simulation antenna you can if you just simulation antenna you can got antenna pattern. If you put it in the system like physical layer system actually you can got a beer array you can got like how many power you use and you, if you put like a system level you can know like if I have a base station here what's my coverage if it's like like a city like where should the best location I, I should put my base station I can have a maximum coverage and how to like how how can I use like the 
based on the UV light distribution, how do I manage my power, make it like everyone can satisfy? Yeah, so I think it's like we try to like get like hardware engineers like work like input to like a like simulation tool like S3 and to show like some like data some like we want to transfer that performance become number like B array like block array even like throughput or like power like usage so we can easier to like define like or like choose the best antenna we need so so in this like in the future we think like when you want to design a product the first step is like you will define your environment first because like uh, 5G channel model is like uh, have a different kind like indoor, outdoor and high will be very different so you first you choose your own scenario and also if you use a millimeter wave if you have uh, environment knowledge they will help you a lot so it, like how much detail like you can tell like in your design of like the real world environment actually will help the performance when you put the device in the real world. So first you choose your own scenario. Second part, you have uh, your hardware simulation, like your simulation of hardware behavior, like beam pattern, or like a uh, fast shifters, even you can go to PCB board. And third part, you put your algorithm. And they have a different kind of I think they have like different kind of algorithm will be like um, have different advantage in different kind of scenario. So we try to follow this concept to do to do this webinar. So first we will try to use an indoor like an office scenario. We will draw the indoor office in Southern. And second part we will take this data and to process to like time on them. So uh, I will go through the detail later. So, we because we want to have like time domain data, like got the power delay profile because we want to know like the delay, the pass loss, the phase changing, and those things will be like met very important for system level simulation. After that, we we'll put an S three. This is like a open source public um, software simulation, and it's it's like uh, they can do like all layer simulation, like full layer simulation, end to end simulation. And we hope if we connect these two and we can transfer like some antenna pattern, like very beautiful like geometry like pattern to some number like will be easy for people to know like how to choose their best antenna or how to design their antenna. Or their, even their other hardware. Okay, so today's like uh, I go to the online. So first part we are talking about like we will have a demo, and second part I will talk more about NS3 and NS3 like what's NS3, what's their goal, and second part we'll talk about like NS3 meter way uh, network simulator, and this is uh, done by NYU. They done a very good job, and they have a lot of awesome like uh, library inside. You can have like LTE, Wi-Fi, millimeter wave, and all layer of internet application. You also can simulation like EPC and like code network. It's very powerful. And the third part will be uh, talking more like go deeper about channel model. What exactly is like 5G channel model? What's the different like from 4G to 5G? And why is that like, made based channel model? And why? what's the reason we choose this? Why we think um, in 5G we need this and we don't need it in 4G? And what's the technology behind it? It's ray tracing. Okay, hope you enjoy this today's webinar. And we are going to have the demo first. Before we start the demo, I want to have a trailer first. So, um, after you finish uh, the first session of webinar, you will see like when we talk about link label and the system level, what it means link label simulation, it means something like this one. So we will got the data from like this is transmit and this this is transmitter and this is receiver, and we will got the simulation like downlink, uplink in different time and they have like different like MCS and MCS is mean modulation code this game. It's like if a number is higher they choose like 
um, larger order maturation and also the code rate may be like uh, less like code bit and more data rate and uh, SIRNR will like tell you like this like syn signal interference noise ratio so you tell like how good is your um, transmit and receive like signal quality right now if you want, you want a number as high as possible but you don't want to waste your power and this is like block array so like so this is like some uh, this is I think is the most value about like link level and system level simulation because it they will show me like number and how much block array I sh I got and SRNR, how much MCS. So based on this number, I know like how to change my algorithm, how to choose the UE, and this is just like um one UE, but you consider to have a multi UE. The real way like you not only one like. In the real world, have cell phone, right? A lot of people have cell phone. Like that interference, and uh, and if you have like a link level and system level simulation, you can simulation those behavior. I think most of in the five G, most of like uh, the airway is not caused by noise. It's caused by interference. It's like caused by other devices, and by using simulation, you can know how much interference you're going to get. Also, have a chance you can overcome this interference if you know what the signal is. So like the noise is like nothing we can overcome because it's, it don't have any rule, it don't have any pattern. But interference, let's have a behavior, let's have a pattern. Let's have a chance to um, evolve or like overcome it. So I hope this will uh, have value to some of the engineer. Okay, in part one, we are talking about our simulation setting in Safan. And first, you will see like the this is a office scenario. It's a very simple one, and we have a uh, one transmitter and one receiver, and we put a wall between it, and also this have a seal. And all the wall and like and the seal and the floor uh, material is we use PEC. The coating is PEC, and PEC is like a perfect electrical conductor. And the transmitter and the receiver is designed for millimeter width and we operate in 60 gigahertz. For mini for transmitter size, they have like 64 antenna element. So we this scenario the transmitter will be like maybe your Wi-Fi modem or bigger like devices that have more powerful. They have more power. And so we also set in like the element. So the element is like each like antenna like a rate element. We use a uh, parametric bin. You also can change to like show dipole or like cross loop. Yeah, anything from this library. Also you can buy file. Use your own antenna design. And you also can change like the main bin direction like to Y or like Z. And for this one we want to like the line in the same direction. So we use Z. And okay. And for here you can change like the bin's angle that will have the uh, uh, moving. Okay. And for receiver side it's like uh, more small devices. So in here they have like only four four element and also we use the same as the uh, parametric bin. And if you notice you'll find out like the wavelength is different transmit and receive. And so for like a uh, transmitter side, normally they want the like the distance the space is like larger because the beam will be sharper. And for receiver side, because sometimes you cannot exactly know where it's like the transmitter or like the base station. So you want the wavelength will be like smaller, so they look more like a ball, like a dipole. Also if you have more like if you have more antenna, your beam can be sharper. Okay. And Let's go to the frequency setting. The fre we do like like frequency sweep. So we start from 58.5 and stop at 61.05. Um, oh, 61 61.5. And we have 100 step. And this setting meaning is like if you, if you have higher bandwidth, so when you transfer to time domain, the time step is smaller. And when you have more step, it means like in time domain, the travel time is like longer. And why we do this? Because we will later we got a result, like uh, 
like result from frequency domain will transfer to time domain, so we can get delay spread profile. And this will be useful for our simulation in NS3. Okay, so this is part one. Um, okay, uh, in this part we are going to talk about how to use Python script to set up a simulation environment. And so let's guess like how long did I spend to draw like the setup we just talked about in part one. Actually, it's very fast as long if you know how to write Python. Okay, uh, like this is a Python script I write before, and you see in in uh, Southern Python script you, st you can use like a function, for loop, and if else they all work. And I just want you to see how fast it can be. Save this time. Okay, uh, are you ready? Let's go. Oh, it's good to watch this. I can watch it again, again, again. Oh, it's done. And you see, yeah, exactly the same model we have. It's a small, like simple office. Have like six wall antenna rate and like uh, six uh, frequency is 60 gigahertz and the element is a, uh, have a bin and receiver receiver is like four element and all the coating yeah and the frequency all set up like with the first one and so it's very fast and it's very useful for like someone have like, a little bit like coding knowledge. Also, it's, I think it's very easy if you want to do like multiple different tasks. You just need to change a little bit number. And it's also very easy to, if you want to run in different machine, you just need to change your code. So bring the goal to the new computer and set up, everything can set up very fast. Um, so because it's very fast, so it's so good. So I want to do it again. Yeah. But this time, I will slow down to tell like a little bit how I do. Okay, this is like the Python script, and inside here, everything is like an object. So let's have a cat tool first, like cat, cat one, and and tap is very easy to use. So yeah, try to use it as many as you can. It's very helpful. Now we can add antenna, antenna array. You also can, we can have a plot. Okay, now we have this. Okay, now we have a cat. And so now we assign like cat one. It's like kind of a pointer. So it's have a, it's like an object and this object is a cat. So we can rename it. And we, we want to be transmitter. Ah, no, this is a cat, so it's not a transmitter. It should be a floor. And uh, I want different like size, so we can just draw it. And I want a meter. Oh, and also. I want sixty right. um the position you can draw they don't let me use draw so Position B and minus four point zero and minus four point eight zero. Okay, and now we have four, so let's have antenna. Antenna, antenna one, project, and 
we want to add and an array and an array we want women to transmit transmitter and we also want sorry a little forgot the number we need what we need um, so oh the design frequency setting okay um now if we want to set in like the element it's like the now we set like antenna one it's like T TX node. If you want to set element, you need to use get node. So let's see. We have another variable. Announce another variable is an element. Get node, and we want this one. Okay. So if you want to change anything inside here, you cannot use like uh, antenna one node. Antenna one node only you can change here. So you can change the size, you can change the array information, but you cannot change the element. So you need to guard a new one. Of course, you can use like uh, fun, use like child, like a uh, point like fun. Antenna one point to element. Uh, yeah, so you can find. Also, you need to see your child node. So same like now the antenna one is uh, TX elements uh, parents node. Okay, but so now we want to setting property and we want type. Oh, okay, I'll just copy fast. It'll be faster. So. Generally, this took a little time, so I will skip it right now. But you see the element they already have. But it just generation when they want to create like uh, antenna array pattern, sometimes it took time. So but they already change the setting. Okay, now if so, this is like how they work. But if you already have the code, then let's do it again. You can just copy it. You can just copy and pass, and make sure like you clean everything here, like clean it. We don't want to duplicate. Okay, we wrong. Oh, <sighs> still fast, still good. Okay, let's check it again. We have all the element we want. We we code that this part is like we try to uh, define our cat like different wall, and this is the antenna part and receiver part, and this is set up like uh, analysis. Okay, yeah. So if you have a further question, you can send me an email, and we are happy to discuss with you. Okay, now I'm going to run simulation, and this simulation might took a while. So after we have the simulation set down, we can like process this and process the data and input to an S3. Okay, I will see you guys a little bit, maybe a few hours later. Okay. Okay. So now this part three. So after like uh, maybe a few hours after the simulation finished, and we now we got the data we want, and we we'll, in this part we're going to transfer the data from frequency domain to time domain, so we can got a data delay profile or in like impulse response. Okay, so 
like uh, for some event, they will create the data have like total field, instant field, scattering field, and total field is what we want. They also can have like uh, power or in DB showing DB, real part or the face or like image part. Okay, so they have different data type and they will all store very good. And so um, we are going to show you like three different kind of simulation. This is the first uh, scenario. It's like two antenna, and both location is like the same we talk about, like three minus three and plus um, three meters, and so this between sixty six meter, and this one is like line outside, so they don't have a wall between. The second part will be this one. So you see, they have like uh, a wall between, and the first one uh, is this one. The beam, they didn't do beam forming, they just red hit each other. And the third part, which we actually sweeping, so we got like 30 degrees. So you see they'll have like, they have chance to like go through it and have a better like signal or like better channel. Okay, so this is like, so the first one will be the line of sight, the red hit. Second one will be uh, non live side, and the third one will be this one. And, uh, kind of like after beam forming, and you find this channel is much better. Oh, uh, for this ray, we use this like uh, visualized ray tracing, and this is a very cool tool. So you can like now we use a filter. I only want to see the ray uh, hit to the receiver. And you can decide like how many bounces you want. Okay. You just like zero, one bounce, or you can have more bounce. Okay. So this is a cool like uh, function. So you can choose. You can play when you have time. But it's not our main point this time today. Okay. So after you finish your simulation, you suppose got the data. So in your sub end file, so they have like. So like no wall, and you have the signal, and you can you want from this one touchstone file. Oh, I forgot to tell. So when you put when you simulation the output, you need to make sure you have like instant field, scattering field, total field, and uh, touchstone file. So the touchstone file is called a SMP file, and you see like they have like the frequency, the frequency we sweep and the real part and the image part and this is the data we want so after that we we use our python code so this python code they can um, the main purpose is uh, do inverse Fourier transform so let's see the first case so this is like uh, the frequency we got so it's like 60 gigahertz the central point 60 gigahertz um, make it Larger, so you can see, and so this is the, the so it's at twenty nanosecond. So be, because uh, this actually makes sense because the uh, transmit and receive they have like six meter uh, between and the light speed. Uh, so based on the light speed, the travel by light speed, so like is at two point zero. It actually makes sense. And you we can see here is the energy, like the dB loss is uh, minus forty three almost minus 44 and this is the phase and this is the second high and third high and the width uh, I display by order but this is just like I just pick like top I think top 4 but you also can show all of them it's huge okay let's see um, so this is the non live side let's run again so remember, it's like uh, minus 43. So let's see the case two. So this case, this is non live side. This one. And let's see this one. And we want to see the angle is zero first. So in this case, how much like uh, channel loss we will got. Let's see. So you can see the channel is like a little worse than before. Also, you see like they have the 
the DB loss, the channel gain loss, uh, power loss is become minus 77. So it has a huge difference. Uh, how can we do that? So yeah, a lot of people say like emitter wave is good technology, but when they have don't have line of sight, yeah, the channel quality is very bad. And you see, yeah, it's 30 dB loss is a lot. But what if, if we do beamforming? If we know what's the right angle, like this one, and we change to 30 degree, so we can have the light space we can go through. Yeah, the channel become much better, and you see, we got like uh, so it's almost like sixty dB, like minus sixty dB. So we actually gain like seventy gain, seventy dBm. So it's a huge. Okay. So in this part, uh, we talking about like different like simulation setting and use the Python. You can transfer the subvent data from frequency domain to time domain and you can get the delay time, the power, and the phase. And this is what we need for like, the channel model, for uh, phase uh, map based channel model. And we're going to put those data inside uh, NS3 to run the link label simulation. Okay, uh, before we talk about NS3, uh, another thing I want to uh, talk about is like uh, the result we got. From seven, so this is the environment we set in, and between these two is sixty uh, six meter, and we have like three case. Uh, first case is um, line of sight, okay, and and uh, have a two is the line of sight, and this is, this is the result part up, okay. So let's compare like this is the line of sight one, and you can see it's like the so the receiver part of is like two two point oh, and so it's kind of, it kind of makes sense because it's sixty uh, six meter between two antenna, and you see like um, another two they take longer, because this one they have a wall between, and this is like they need to change the the beam switch another angle, so the travel time is lo longer, and also you see like the power, then line of sight is like it's higher. But for the line of sight, like actually it's have a dB decrease. And this part is like the one that hit the wall directly, they have a huge like uh, power loss. Okay, so also another thing we found out, if you got a clean signal, if you do like frequency sweeping, your channel will be like, look like more like a sign signal. But if like you something block you, your channel will look more like noise. Yeah, this is a very interesting like, thing we find out during this like uh, testing. Okay, now we are going to uh, talk more about NS3. Yeah. Okay, uh, everyone, this is the final part. That we are going to talk about NS3, and we will use the channel model we got from Savant and input to NS3 to run a link level and system level simulation. And this is the final part. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, all the people are still watching it. And I hope you find this part very interesting. Okay, so first, we will, this is like uh, Ubuntu. And because uh, NS3 is uh, open source, and it's very powerful open source. So well, it's more easy to run in Linux systems. Okay, um, so let's find the file. CD. And desktop and we want is the millimeter wave a millimeter wave new handover ls okay it's the right one mm. so we run simulation and I put most of my file in uh, scratch let's see Okay. So this is a retracing. So they will take a few minutes, not too long. In the same time, I want to show like uh, what's NS3 inside, how many code, what's ability, and how many code they have. Okay. So this is like Eclipse, and when you open it. You can see like this is a scratch, 
and now we have a basic military example and the retracing one and most of like the source code is in here and here you can find um, the antenna setting the different model also you can find mobility like a point to point layout Wi-Fi uh, LTE and today we will focus on millimeter width and you can see all the model here and they have a different channel model like different channel you can use like 3GPB channel model also it's like a, uh, they also have the normal the beamforming also have a channel metric also have a this one is like just based on the past loss and like shadowing they use like this way to calculate yeah and so today we use is a ray tracing one okay and so each of them they have like uh, so let's go to the main core so this is like uh, our so ray tracing example and you can call a lot of function and it's at first it will be uh, maybe difficult to like read but after somehow you're used to it it's not too difficult actually it's quite easy so it's not like you can have like basic setting how you want like uh, the start point the study time simulation start time and the speed and for our case the uh, transmit and receive is fixed and they didn't move also let's support like um, hybrid ARQ, you can have a hybrid ARQ or not, you have this source combined also you can say the like, transmit power and like the frequency, in this case with 60 gigahertz and you can, the channel model now we use is like the ray tracing one of course you can use like 3GPP or your own channel model and this is IP address and so everything you want is like this, this just like uh, just come out the setting the default setting. After that, you need to use the helper. Uh, check, sorry. So yeah, so everything you want, like you just have like EPC helper, and also have a mini millimeter wave helper like here. Yeah. So you can when you want to define thing, you can just define helper first. After that, you just create it. So after we uh, we have all the settings, we just create like InnoB is a base station and UE, you create the one UE, this case is one UE and we put the location and we like initial like make sure it's start running and here you can see like when it's starting time and uh, how many data they request, the data rate and just run, after they just stop yeah. Okay, I think the simulation should be down. Oh, not this one. Yeah, it's down. It's not that long. And so we can see here, and you can see this is the, the thing we run. And they will show you like uh, the starting time, and we have people put delayed, and as a down link, up link, and also like the cell ID like MCS, MNC is a modulation coding scheme so it's like a quam and the code rate combined so if it's a M MSC is higher it means like use like a higher uh, modulation maybe like um, 256 quam also the code rate will be like uh, lower you send more data oh this is like SINR so it's very powerful it even can simulation multi-user and they will calculate like the block array. So this one, this case we use it like, um, what well, which which one which example we are running right now? Oh, so yeah, this is like the uh, because we already do beamforming. Yeah, so you see like the the data is the SNR is not too bad. Okay, so. I already run before, so I will show you the, the, the data I run b before, so it will be much faster, we can save some time. Uh, oh, before that, we need to uh, go through more the data we create. So after you run simulation, they will give you like four files, and this file, they will tell you the uplink, like how many the block, like package they're sending. 
and this is like the most important part most I care about because uh, uh, most of my research is about physical layer so SNR and like MCS is like very important to me and this is like how many like packages so because we request like mix my uh, 1400 and they and this is done link R ROC and you see the whole time how many packages they sent in and also this is statistic. Yeah, so you can see it's like when, what time it changed me to where. Yeah. So I have like a lot of like uh, data to keep it. Okay, let's comp do some compare. So let's see this one demo. So remember we have a three model and I did wrong putting M3. So this one, the first one is on live sign. And second one is like uh, the first one is line of sight, and it's like a two antenna six meter between, and the second one will be like the line of sight is zero degree. They have a wall between, and the third part is like they have wall between, but they use a beam for me have a thirty degree, so they can like shooting and bouncing. Okay, so the first one they will see. So if it feels like the line of sight, actually your SNR is like forty. And it's quite high, so you can see the maturation skin is pretty high. Also, like you got almost zero error. And second, we compare with this one. And this one is like they have a wall between. So you can see like the DB SNR, SNR is drop. So it's from 40 to like uh, 6, so it's like 34 dB loss. And so this is the reason that a lot of people is talking about like millimeter where you need to be line of sight. Only can like um, like use like fixed wireless like communication, kind of like maybe can replace for fiber. But when people is moving, it's hard to check. But because I like, lost a lot, like pets lost, lost a lot. But uh, yeah. Okay, so the third one uh, is like um, if we do a beam bombing. So if we like we sweep, we sweep our beam to like uh, 30 degree, and you can see like actually you got a very huge gain, you got an 18 dB gain. Yeah, so this is the reason like we think like ray tracing like technology is very important. That may base channel model. So if you have a real world geometry, you can more easy to find like where is the right beam, how to use like a hybrid beam for me to gal improve your energy gain. If you use statistics, it's hard to like know like where is the right beam for me. You just need to this is the reason we think ray tracing or like map based channel model will be the future and the more important role in for 5G simulation, especially for millimeter wave. And let's compare it's like this is line of sight and you got forty and zero but when you have a wall you drop and you still have some error and also you see the maturation skin also drop you cannot use a very high maturation and when it's like if you do some beam for me it's go back again and also you don't have any error yeah okay so this is like uh, the simulation i want to show and so after this part I will talk more about NS3, but this is all the simulation will be done today. Okay, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have more questions about the setting and how to use NS3 or something, you can give me an email. Yeah, we can chat. Looking forward to more people to involve this 5G um, research because I think for me it's a way it's a very important technology, but I still have a lot of problem, lot of things need to everyone to working on. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, uh, hi. Uh, so for the audience, like first, um, like knowing our history, they are here is two example I want to show to you guys, and also I want to show share a little bit about what's like an history. Uh, ability and this just like the very little thing but the answer is much pro more powerful than this okay so if you go through like uh, the document uh, file you will find like they have 
in example, you will find a tutorial. And if you go through from uh, first to seventh, you will know the I think you have some concept about N3 how they work. Yeah, I strongly recommend everyone if you're interested in N3, then this is a good starting point. Okay. Here, like you just like um, we just include few library, like, uh, network point to point N3 application. Okay, and here you can see. It's just a comment line, we just like, you can show on that. And here I have a node, we create two nodes, and we define like point to point, the data rate and the delete. And so that we have, co we like announce the devices and we put like point to point, like this communication store inside to the devices. And we have two, two nodes. And also like we give the stock, give an address, IP address, and the inter we define an interface, and we also can on a server. So, so one is like, so this is a server, and the night will be like the client or like a UE, and so this simulation start at one and in ten seconds. So, yeah, we can start, and so the maximum package I I want to show more. So let's see, let's have five. And enter so the pick out is so the star two and star maybe we can be shorter. Okay, so we save our file. Make sure you. Oh, it's not good. You see, I got the data from like the first so example. So this is not a good idea. So I should not change. I mean like the example data. So we can just close it. Uh, don't save. So you see, like we would, we let's let's if you read the document, let's strongly like, recommend you just copy the file in Scratch. So here I already copy. So this is the first. Uh, okay, do the same. So so I will not touch the code. Okay, so we change your own code. If you do something messed up, you still can go back to like like original file to find the uh, original like direction to find the file. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, let's start again. So this is the first and um, all this IP address. I won't have like more package, and I want this start fast. Let's client will start faster, but server still running. Oh no, I want to change. So it will start. So the client will lose some data. Okay, let's see. Also, this is our first file. Okay, let's go back to the terminal and. So start again. So this time we will want find first. Make sure there's no CC behind. And this should be fast. Oh, so let me compile a little bit, but it should be fast. Okay, then now you see. So in like two seconds, the clients start wake up, they send in to the port nine, and they will go receive and uh, after six the server down, so the client even running, they still have, and also, I think I run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I said I want 5, so maybe I need to more, so sure they will stop, 15. Oh, you see, so, after like seven, because the server shut down, so the client still keeps sending requests, but they got nothing. Yeah. Okay. So this is our for example, and so you can know like how to set up an S3 like basic, the easiest one. You just need to like create a node, tell these two nodes, like what's the channel between them, and decide like, the IP address, and tell what kind of request the client want, and start running and destroy. Okay, so this is the first example I want to show, and the second one, like they can create a graph. So this one is like a micro microwave like ovens like the, so you can see like the chain, the frequency and like the time like the kind of like the channel model, but it's not. But I can see the signal amplitude. So so I have a transmit receive and 
Okay, so the thing I want to talk more about here, they can draw. So we just run the data first, the code first. Yeah. So after they finish, then you have another one, and you need to use this G and gun plot. Okay. And what do we want? Okay, let's start the test two. Two. Um, we just copy the code and then we go to the uh, the folder. Okay, you see TS2 EPS. And you can see this one, a very beautiful photo. Uh, uh, this is like power spectrum density, and you can see that this is a frequency, this is a time, and this is kind of like a channel, and it's very beautiful. And it tell you like the uh, energy the lost. Yeah. Um, so for this two example, just like a uh, hope it will be a start, start point for the one who is interested in NS3. And the first one just to tell you the basic NS3 model how to set up. Second is like tell you they can plot the very beautiful photo. Also they can create a lot of the statistic data. Okay, thanks for watching. And um, after this, uh, I will talk more about like uh, NS3 and what this organization, or how many people are still working on this. Also, I will talk more about the channel model, and this part will have a, a little map. And also, I will tell the main reason why uh, 5G is a, right now is the timing to use um, ray tracing, why I didn't use before, and why map based channel model is important in 5G. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope uh, everyone enjoyed the uh, the demo we have in the uh, part one, the session one, and now we're going to session two. We w uh, I want to introduce, I want to talk more about like what's an S3 and why I like this uh, open source, uh, open source software so much, and I think it have a lot of value inside. And um, S3 um, is a target for primarily for research and education used. And this is like for public, it's, uh, it's available for everyone for research developer and used. And NS3 is a, the goal of NS3 project to develop a preferred uh, open simulation environment for networking research. It should be aligned for simulation natives of uh, modern networking research and should encourage a community contribute, peer review, validation of the software. And here is a link, and if you want to download NS3 or you want to check a document or you want to contribute, it's the link. And hope you can find the information you need. And NS3 is like they'll be used for uh, very uh, many years for education and experiment. And they most of uh, inside they use uh, C++ and some of the Python, so you can they have like many lines of code, I think the number should be updated, have more right now because 5G is coming, they improve more 5G stuff and so NS3 mainly support like Linux and Mac and if you use you are a Windows user, you need you maybe need to install a virtual machine ok the NS3 we use right now actually is uh, done by NYU, they have done a very good job, they done a very awesome job here and why like uh, NS3 is important have value because for 5G, if you really want to have a, a very good like performance, actually you not just like for some your your own layer like no matter physical or main leg, if you want to have like a very good result of uh, fit like 5G requirement, actually you need to simulation all layer every layer. It's like seven layer and they need to work together. Even like hybrid informing is a good example. Before, like, uh, we just use um, 
best band algorithm to do the beam for me, the digital beam for me. But in order to make like the beam sharper and have better, you need to use a fast shifter and combine with um, your best band algorithm. Also, like if you like URLs, the scheduling need to change. You want to optimize how to scratch user when to uplink, downlink. Everything need to like optimize and work together. And also another like good value is like even like 5G is coming, but still the facility of 5G is not the problem to every like every place. So like most of the time like the 5G base stations still need to work with uh, LTE like base station or even LTE core like EPC. So like because NS relay integrate with like 5G and LTE is a system, so it's very easy to simulation like multiple layer and how to work together, how they even how to influence with each other. Also, the same UE devices they can have like LTE and the 5G two system work together. Okay, and this is the overview of uh, this like uh, NYU millimeter wave simulator. So you see like the the green parts already have NS3 like LTE stuff and they customize millimeter wave from the physical layer and MAC layer. And for us we we will change the we will change the channel model like spectrum channel and also we change the beamforming and the antenna array model. So What's the value of this? Because like in different layer, you can get different result. And the result for the like, antenna design, it might be not important, but for system engineer, like, have a lot of value from those number. If like from physical layer, you can get like the bare array, block array, and from back layer, you can see like every super is like a base station, like how much. UE I can cover where is the best location to put the UE uh, put up where is the best location I can put my, where is the best location I can put my base station so I can have optimal coverage and also like if I know like where is those UE like distribution I know how to like um, organize like managing my power power usage and for link level like physical layer if I know like bare ray and I can calculate like the devices like power battery use how, when they need to change the battery and also I can know like where should I put my base station and also I can calculate like in the future everyone maybe have a Google Home or like Alexa they might have interference we can calculate this so I can know where is the best location to put those devices because those devices they might not work together but they use same frequency. At least Wi Fi they both use like two point four gigahertz and five gigahertz. So we see like uh we see huge potential for combine like NS3 with NSS simulation tool so we can simulation hardware and like best band signal together. Thanks for the people still watching. So now we are going to our section three. It's the final. So this this section will have like a little math, and we'll talk more about like 5G channel model. And this one, this slide is like if you already are expert for like 5G, then maybe this is not useful for you. But because uh, based on my experiments. Like my personal experience, I feel like now a lot like 5G become a buzzword. A lot of people just think of oh, 5G, you just have like high bandwidth and then low latency. But somehow I feel like maybe you cannot get together. It's a different scenario. Like URLC, you can get like very low latency. But if you want like very high bandwidth, you need to uh, use that like, EMBB scenario. And you want low power, it's like MMTC. But it's not like everything you can just have 5G and you got everything solved. Also, like 5G still have a lot of like problem didn't solve. They have a huge potential, yes, but they still have a lot of unsolved problem with everyone to discover. Yeah. So I would today I will talk more about like what's like 5G channel model, what's the requirement for this channel model. Also, like why we 
consider we think like maybe this channel model have huge potential and also like we talk about like the technology behind it is like ray tracing technology. So this is from like EMTIS, it's a Euro group. Also I have a 3GPP but I just uh, because they uh, want to talk more about main base channel model so I, I take their reference. And so like first requirement you need to have like wire branch publication scenario and network topologies. It means you need to support all kinds of scenario, like most important part of the three scenario is that EMBB, URLC and MMTC. Of course, like CV2X, um, CV2X is a uh, for like it's kind of like from D2D, but now because like uh, automated driving car is like very popular, so it's separate to it. So for EMPB, you can have like high bandwidth, like downlink, like a movie, maybe like just like like a f f like 2G movie, HD movie, you just have few second. Um, so this one will be like very important for AR, VR, those like gaming. And URLC is like ultra reliable low latency, so this one will be like very important for the automatic driving car. So it's like I think the latency need to be like one microsecond. So it's mean like when the car in front of you, you don't want have latency or have an error. So they they, ha they have a limit of hybrid IQ. You cannot keep like they don't want to transmit. I hope I can hybrid IQ can solve. And MNTC is like a uh, main thing machine type communication this is kind of like for smart factory or like industry 4.0 kind of stuff so the scenario is like the IoT devices so you don't want to change they have like sensors camera you don't want to change their battery every day or every two weeks so they want to like very low power if they can sleep they just sleep more they just wake up when they need and second is like spectrum relay uh, spectrum. We talk about spectrum because like uh, for 5G they start using a like, millimeter wave, so it's a much high frequency. So you need to support like sub six or also like uh, high frequency band like uh, 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 frequency range two. And so part like is antenna. Antenna part is like requirement like this you need to support like main CME more. And um, for LTE, 12 antenna may be already a lot, but for main CME more they can go to like 550 even 500. Thousand of antenna, and they also support antenna array. And this antenna, because the frequency increase, the antenna becomes smaller and smaller. Also, they even have a testing problem, so they they cannot the cable cannot connect. They need to use like over the air test, also the chamber. This is a lot of important, a lot of problem to actually testing from the real world. So if you so got a real channel, that accuracy channel might become more difficult, and it's also like very important. And the third part is like the publication will relate to like re uh, relate to requirement is like you need to get the accuracy AOA and DOA, and this will uh, actually very important when like um, when the object is moving because they will affect to your Doppler uh, effect. Also like before like um, LTE part because they we assume they have a lot of multi paths so the AOA and DOA actually with some got one. We didn't separate the difference. We can so we can use like relay channel model to simulate this, to like calculate this. But right now, because we don't have enough multi pass in millimeter wave, so each pass AOA and DOA become very important. Also, the nafs and nafs I change a lot, makes a lot of different. Also, the complexity and the accuracy is, f I think, it's always even 6G, 7G. I think it will be there because like you want a very accuracy channel model but you don't want to spend like hours to get a, just a single point result but so how can keep like the trade off between like complexity and accuracy is always a problem also a task and the, the third part is like a uh, general requirement is like this model need to be realistic need to be work with like mm, the result need to fit with the real world geometry like real world mm, scenario Okay, so maybe uh, channel model is like they use uh, ray, ray tracing technology and they simplify the 3D geometry description, the propagation environment. And so it's mean like because uh, we know that millimeter wave non level sign, level sign is a huge difference. If you have the geometry and input in your simulation, you can know when they were bouncing is non level sign or non level sign, how to you decide your beamforming. This is very important. And 
so second of all like what need to be simplified because if you use like really like real world geometry like low stack structure it will be calculated will be a lot and maybe I cannot finish like in a week so need to be simplified and second of all like you also need to put a material parameter like what's light like refraction what's the like scattering the electromagnetic like um, material property this is like for like ray tracing when the ray shooter object what the, how much they will deflation or they will go through or they will scattering and so, so yeah this kind of like so this kind of s the third part so you need to consider about the diffusion and reflection and diffuse scattering and blocking okay so the second what is the ray tracing like technology so ray tracing is uh, like you have the you, you, you set a set transmitter point and receiver point and the transmitter keeps shooting the ray from any kind of other direction and the see like energy like received from like receiver part so in this way and they will the ray will keep like um propagation to the wall or like they will block they will have like refraction they will go through they have scattered so in this way they will get very accuracy like simulation result but you need to have like two requirements first one you need to have a knowledge of the environment second the, the computing power is like much it's, it's a you need to have more computation power but in our point of view i think it's like before like lt general model just uh, a way we can like judge like uh, our system performance but in the future i think like this uh, knowledge of the environment is also not just required for a channel model also it's required for base station if a base station can know like have a knowledge of the environment they can know where it's the look you not just only like where is the UE they can know they have the knowledge of the environment it's much easier to do like beam forming and they cannot just only like line of, line of sight they even can try to bounce in but maybe first bouncing the energy will drop a little bit but still enough in most of the case so we think like for using main base channel model it's not just for accuracy also the algorithm they can create it's, it's not like the uh, stochastic uh, channel model can compare and so this is just a little bit mass a uh, little mass so I, I hope I can go through it very fast not suffer you guys too much so so what you need if you want a channel model so you need like each pass for me pass is like transmit and receive they have a different shooting maybe line of sight and shooting the wall non line of sight and depend on how many rate they can like from transmit to receive and need to calculate it and you need to have each pass the loss like pass loss and the phase and the delay and the angle of a variable and the angle of departure and have a both like direction also if you have the, if the your device is moving you also need a speed so if you so this part then the first part will be like the pass loss and the shadowing and the urx and utr is like angle uh, aoa and the doa and so they will be like different like very important this angle we have value when the f when your object is moving they change a lot and the w part is actually the beam forming so you got a channel and you got the, the beam forming again so it's a total again from like a transmitter to receiver and so what outcome of like ray tracing you can got small s s large and small scattering a uh, scale of large and small scale propagation parameter also like a memo channel impulse response metric over time and frequency so what i mean is if it's hard to understand it's a photo this is i mean like a memo channel game that channel like if you have those input result that should have a this you have like a frequency domain and time domain and then I have each point in these two like in on this graph if you have this very accuracy of this data then you got a very good like channel model okay here's the reference um so this is today's webinar um 
hope you enjoy this time and we we'll let me know if you have any question we are happy to like know more about what you guys doing for 5G uh, research and they have a this uh, 5G is coming but there's still a lot of problems unsolved so we are happy to have more people to join to working on this and also uh, we're going to have a meetup um, so in Bay Area and this is especially for simulation so and we were moving each time will be like different location if mm, you don't want stuck in traffic after like work you're welcome to join and please follow up our um, website and YouTube channel and meetup group so you can find the newest information thank you so much